I want you to hit me as hard as you can. about two of the biggest icons of American film. Chances are you think about Clint Eastwood and Tom Hanks. Now these two legends are finally teaming up together this weekend as Clint directs Tom in the true story of hero pilot Chelsea Sullenberger, also known as Sully. And now that we're in Oscar season, this flick looks like it could join the company of other Oscar-nominated tales about aviation disasters. Films like Airport, United 93, and Flight. And films not at all like today's review subject, the 1997 airbound thriller, Turbulence. And back in 1997, a movie like this had no appeal to a seven-year-old kid like me. Oh, an airplane movie starring the girl who played Mary Samsonite in Dumb and Dumber? Huh, <laughs> sounds like some boring adult stuff to me! But then as I was watching my VHS copy of Mars Attacks, I saw the trailer for it. This plane is not gonna land! Is Twister at 36,000 feet? Turbulence. Wait a minute. This movie's got explosions and white zombie music and it's Twister at 36,000 feet? Oh, now you can consider me sold. And though this flick was neither a hit financially or critically, it's one I watched the hell out of back in the day. So now's as good a time as any to give it a second look. I mean, this movie was popular enough to get two sequels, and I'm sure those movies couldn't possibly be worse than this first one. Now the party gets real. He could overpower the satanic hijackers. Yeah! Okay, why the hell am I not watching that movie instead? So our film opens as we follow Ryan Weaver, a man played by Ray Liotta who's giving a Christmas gift to his girlfriend, but is interrupted when the police break in to arrest him, as led by Lieutenant Hector Elizondo, who says Ryan is actually an escaped convict known as the Lonely Heart Strangler, who has been said to have raped and killed five women, even though Ryan claims he's completely innocent. I never killed anybody, and you know it. Um, I have some doubts about your innocence, sir. For one thing, you're played by Ray Liotta. Oh, hey, hey. And secondly, I've already seen the fucking trailer for this movie. <laughs> I never killed anybody. But either way, Ryan is getting extradited back to prison on a nearly empty flight back to Los Angeles, even though the odds of finding a nearly empty airplane on Christmas Eve are about a million to fucking never. Also getting sent back to prison is a bank robber named Stubbs, played by Brendan Gleeson, who turns his Irish accent into the most wildly unconvincing southern accent I've heard in a movie. I'd like to nail you, baby. Well, what am I gonna do, chains on? I gotta hit the head. You went before we took off. I gotta go again. Ah, yes, it's the missing member of the Blue Collar Comedy Tour, Stubbs the Homicidal Guy, known for his famous catchphrase. I gotta go again. And as Ryan and Stubbs are looked over by Terry, a flight attendant played by Lauren Hawley, Stubbs stabs one of the marshals with a soap plunger off a sink and proceeds to kill off the rest of them, while accidentally shooting a hole into the airplane and throwing it into chaos. <laughs> Thankfully, Terry plugs up the hole with a fucking suitcase, Ryan shoots Stubbs dead, and a valuable lesson is learned. Transporting homicidal maniacs on a civilian plane is a bad fucking idea. But the two pilots of the plane have also gotten themselves killed in all this hubbub, and Lori is forced to keep the plane flying while it heads into a class 6 thunderstorm. But thanks to the ground control crew, Lori is in good hands. Now the good news is that you are flying the most sophisticated plane that has ever been built. Wow, that is a pretty sophisticated airplane. But as Ryan takes care of the crew and passengers down below, we find out he may not be the innocent angel he claims to be. No fucking duh. And this is where the movie really kicks into gear. From now on, Ray Liotta is now acting like a full-on maniac, like he just snorted all the leftover cocaine from the Goodfellas set. Dashing through the snow. Terry! You're gonna be the first fucking cop to die with a plane up his ass! 
<laughs> he camps it up and chews up scenery like nobody's business in this movie. And that's a good thing, because Lauren Hawley's character is far from being a headstrong heroine. Not only does she keep trusting and engaging with the homicidal maniac, even after the FBI agents on the ground tell her he's a certified nutcase, but half of her dialogue can be summed up like this. <laughs> adds up to a movie so goofy that if it was renamed Airplane 3 the threequel, it'd be completely fitting. You've got Ray Liotta hopping around like a murderous Daffy Duck, you've got Brendan Gleeson talking like Boss Hogg's asshole, and you've got some hilariously overwrought drama with these scenes of ground control trying to get Terry to land the plane. My god, she's turning it around. How the fuck can she turn around? She's only a stewardess for god's sake. She's a flight attendant. Did I forget to mention the scene that shamelessly rips off The Shining? Say your prayers. Here's a lawsuit from the estate of Stanley Kubrick. So it's safe to say Turbulence is not the gripping thriller I remember watching back in my childhood. But it's still a fun as hell watch in my adulthood. And hey, it's technically a Christmas movie, and what says Christmas better than Ray Liotta strangling a woman to death on a toilet? Merry Christmas. Uh, this is your captain speaking, reminding you to get yourself some alcoholic beverages from the drink cart, because we are now flying into the awfully good drinking game. Take a shot or drink every time you hear Ray Liotta laughing like a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> You know, if cocaine had the ability to laugh, I think it would laugh like Ray Liotta. There's a reference made to It's a Wonderful Life. Excuse me, miss, what's the movie? It's a Wonderful Life. It's a Wonderful Life. Oh good, thank you movie. Now I'm going to associate Frank Capra's timeless Christmas classic with a deranged Ray Liotta for the rest of my life. Buffalo gals, can't you come out tonight? Can't you Buffalo gals, can't you come out? Can I? Lauren Holly crashes the plane into something else. I think it's a Ford. And take a double shot when you hear the name of the movie name dropped in the movie. Three heavies in front of us reported serious turbulence. As well as for the two times Brendan Gleeson tries to scare this elderly couple. Boo! Ah! Boo! Ah. I would make a joke about how he scared the shit out of those old people, but they're old people. We know they've got shit in their pants already. And on the nudity watch, you do spend a significant chunk of this movie getting to see Lauren Holly wear nothing but her bra. And here I was thinking her boobs were gonna look like headlights, like they did in Dumb and Dumber. Oh, what a disappointment. No wonder Jim Carrey left her. On the enjoyableness continuum scale from Boulder Bruce, turbulence may hit some cloudy skies, but ends up landing safely after reaching an altitude of 8 out of 10. This Christmas movie season, deck your halls with Lauren Holly. I'm Jesse Shade, and on behalf of Jolo Airlines, we hope you've learned something from our lesson on how to protect your plane from Ray Liotta attacks. In our next airline safety video, we will be moving on to teaching some advanced techniques. Damn!